Hi everybody, Alaskan Ballistics here. This is my Caddy Armor plate. It's a multi-curve plate. You see right there. Made to fit a little bit better. I ordered a level 3 plus, which should in theory stop M855 ball, but it does only say level 3, 556, M193, 3100 feet per second here. So hopefully we can get something close to that. This is what they sent. So I did not get the build-up coat for extra frag sprawling on this one. I did on my personal ones that I have in my carriers, but I did not get it on this one because I wanted to see what it stopped. What I really like about the company is that they ship it in a flat rate shipping box. So it's actually cheap to ship. I ordered one from AR500 a while back, as you guys know, if you followed the channel. And it was as much to ship it to Alaska as it was for the darn piece of metal. But that was a level 4 build-up coat and everything, which I haven't shot yet. But this is a level 3, so let's get out of the range and shoot it. So we're setting up here to shoot our Caddy Armor plate. We are at perfectly safe shooting range here in Point McKenzie. And we have snowshoed down this area because nobody's been out here. Michael Kaler's playing with my AR. He likes this setup. This is a JT Distributing. Uh, you were in the military. T tell me about your uh, the setup here. What do you think about that? Okay, so for this, I'd use it. Yeah. Because it, you can say as much as you want to about it, but the reality is I'd use it. I have nothing. I have absolutely zero issues with your setup here. You know, little things, I'd probably put my light on the other side, but, like, that's all personal on how your hand fits. So I'd use it, and I've seen it shoot before, so I like it, man. Yeah. Cool. So we got an M1A. Thanks, Jason. And Jason's Tika, uh, you've seen on the channel before, but he's put the wood timber stock on it because it's a better stock, fits them better. Uh, 243, 375 Ruger. They're going to be getting guns out, making noise while I go over the ammo that we're shooting. <laughs> um, we're going to be starting with 22, which I don't have here on the table, but um, then we're going to go with some 9mm plus 2 plus extreme penetrator out of the Glock. Then we got some 10mm out of the Glock Model 40. Then we're going to do what it's rated. For, uh, actually, then we're going to step up to 357 Magnum Outdoorsman Hardcast. It should stop all three of those rounds easy. If it doesn't, the video's over, and this is short, and uh, Caddy Armor's not going to pay me to do another one. Not that they're paying me for this one. Um, but anyway, then we got some 55-grain uh, ball going slightly over what uh, the, the armor is rated for. The armor's only rated for uh, 3,100. So, and then we got the, uh, the ball, the 62-grain full metal jacket ball, uh, and it's the penetrator. Then we got 243 GMX, 7 millimeter 08, 139 grain interlock, 120 grain, 65 Creedmoor. This stuff goes over a thousand feet or 3,000 feet per second, so you might get in there with that all copper bullet. Uh, we got a lead bullet, 6.5 by 284 Norma. We're gonna shoot the M1A, 7.62 by 51 with 149 grain full metal jacket. Should stop that. I think this will make it through 139 grain LRX. This particular box I chronographed earlier, 3,400 feet per second. It's only rated for 3,200, but it's going 34 out of my my gun at that alt altitude we were at. We were at about 1,000 feet off of sea level. Here we're at sea level. This ought to go through 3,000 feet per second, 185 grain GMX from Hornady and 338 Wind Mag. And then we got 375 Ruger GMX as well. So that's what we're out here today. Sorry, it's an overcast day in the winter. Not a lot of sunlight for this video. You guys got to get on Patreon where I can afford some outdoor lighting and all that jazz. So let's do that. And uh, God bless. And enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Here we go. Jason with the Ruger 1022 suppressed. Here he is shooting the caddy armor. There we go. Looks like it's uh, splattered back some. Mm, that for sure. Did it jam? Hitting it? No, uh, I want you to shoot into the snow. See how you like that suppressor. Oh, for sure. None of us. I didn't even have my hearing on for that. I didn't either. I, I didn't even forgot to turn them on. We're gonna start out with them. Yeah, go <laughs> shoot in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hole in the snow. You like it? Oh man. You First time it? shooting a suppressor. What do you think? Why are these things illegal? They're not illegal. They're just expensive. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go look at the damage. I saw something fly back. 
It looks like it chipped it a little bit. That's a piece of rubber right here in the snow about 12, 13, 14 feet back from the uh, table. Hit it right there. So it didn't do any hardly damage to the plate. Just a little bit of less smooth. You can see the tape. It chipped that in, in the, the base coat. I didn't get the buildup cut, but the base coat just chipped in uh, cold weather. So something to think about. You might want to definitely get the buildup coat. All right, here we go. Jason with the 9 millimeter. All right, hit it lower right corner. Okay, let's see uh, nine millimeter plus B plus extreme penetrators. See how we did here. Chip the coat. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing on the back, Michael. No deformation. He's not doing an Officer Greg finger wiggle there, so. Oh yeah. Oh, come on, dude, this is rated G. Oh, Come on, man. Michael Kaler, 10 millimeter Glock 40. Okay, hit it right on the right side of the plate. Range clear. Let's go see what we did. The plate jumped about twice as far off the backstop, but... No deformation in the back? Just no. chipped the base coat, that's all it did. Yeah. Definitely uh, definitely works against handgun threats so far. Yeah, look, you can see some of the copper right there. So, right there on the table, some of it's right there. All right. So we need to turn this a little bit more so we're angled again, so it misses us. Thank you, Michael Kaler with the running snowshoes. Look at that, Ch taking the uh, camera there. Good safety by Jason. Here we go, Jason. 357 Magnum Buffalo Bore Hardcast. There we go. Big splatter on the plate. Pretty big splatter on the plate, but looks good. Looks like it stopped it. Look at that. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing in the back? Nothing. Nothing in the back. Good splatter. All right, now we're stepping up to the 5.56 five, for what it's actually rated for. Here we go, 5.56. Five, First round is 62 grain M855 ball. Second round is M193. Here we go. Got to really brighten that red dot for out here. Looks like we had a no fire. Got a primer strike. Yeah, it's a light primer strike. Here we go, 55 grain right here. All right. See if I can drop that. Let's see if it'll fire again. And 62 grain ball here. All right, let's go check it out. So that's the 62 grain ball, and I don't see. I know I there, there's the MA55. That's it. That's it right there. Okay. Well, it didn't do anything but flatten those. I don't know if we're gonna get through it or not. I was thinking those would get through it. So there we are. Nothing in the back, as you can see. Not even a deformation in the back. So we're gonna have to do a new tape job in a minute. Uh, actually, now we're gonna do 
20 inch barrel 556. Five, See if the extra velocity that it's supposed to actually get makes a difference. Here we are, Palmetto State, 20 inch barrel, 556. Five, First the 55 grain ball, and then the 62 grain ball stuff. Lancer magazine. All right, here we go. Not bad. Stop both of them. No splash back all the way back here at 20 yards. So that's good. Let's go check it out. So here's our 55 grain, just a little dent in there, and there's our 62, just a little dent, not much. We're getting all the spalling off, but that's it. With a build-up coat, this would be really nice. I'm glad I got the build-up coats on my other ones, but uh, this would be really nice with a build-up coat. So definitely go that option if you're looking at caddy armor, but so far it'll stop what it's rated for. So now let's see if we can punch a hole through it. I'm ready to punch a hole through this thing. Let's see if that 243 GMX does. We got a 243 Thompson Center Venture here. 80 grain Hornady GMX. We know from one of my other videos, this stuff is going 3,200 feet per second out of this gun. It's rated for 3,400 on the box. A little overboard there, but here we are. Let's see how we do going top middle. Sounds like it stopped it. Let's see. grain GMX just ever so slight bit of ridges from okay where it's balled out okay so you can see where all that copper is didn't go through just some ridges man no deformation 3200 feet per second copper all right we'll try the 65 see if the heavier bullet will do all right we got the Bagara HMR it's my favorite rifle that I own so smooth you don't even feel the round get picked up off the magazine it's how smooth it is Got the scope on four power, 120 grain Hornady GMX. Let's see what we do here. All right, going over 3,000 feet per second out of my other 65 grain more. It ought to be going more out of this. Let's see what it did. All right, so I would say that this is our first actual divot that I can feel. I can actually feel the point where the bullet impacted. Uh, there's not enough deformation on the back to feel it. I'm sure there is some, but not enough to feel it. But yeah, still didn't go through. All right, let's try the uh, old school 6.5 by 284 Norma. Old school Wildcat round from the 70s. All right, 6.5 by 284 Norma. I, when I traded for this gun, I got some uh, 142 grain hollow point boat tail match and they got Lapua brass so we better pick up this brass here we go all right finally broke the tape knocked it down with some power right there it's like 270 power let's go Oh, that's the biggest dent yet. 6.5 by 284 Norma. That one's probably going around 27, 2800 feet per second, but a 1 in 40 grain bullet. So we're going to reduct take this up 
and eh. I've got I've got back deformation on this one. Oh, we got back deformation? Ever so slight. Very slight back deformation. That's the first one we had any back deformation with. So, have much heavier bullet than it's rated for. Not going quite as fast as it's rated for. We'll see when we get to the 30 odd six, seven mag, and a couple of shots here. Next up will be seven millimeter 08 Hornady interlock. Look at Michael Kaler going ham. Apparently duct tape doesn't always work in Alaska. Not at nine degrees. Here we go, seven millimeter 08 Ruger compact youth, 18 inch barrel, probably not getting enough velocity to go through if nothing else went through. Let's see. Yep, starting to snow pretty good here. <laughs> and there goes the duct tape job. I hit it right, right into there. my tape job. All the work I do for this chip. <laughs> <laughs> That one? Yeah. Yep, a little more back. Okay, so. All right. The impact. There's the impact right here. And a little bit more back deformation, you said? Yeah, just a touch. Just a touch right there. Actually, so. it, well, that's one of the things where it's less than that 6.5 by 284 Norma, which does, again, lend to the speed is yeah. more effective than weight of bullet. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, we got Michael Kayla here. Make sure you check out his channel. And he's got an, an M1A, it belongs to my buddy, El, El's also here. And so, he's rocking that mag in, trying to. Come on, didn't you have to train with those or something? Nope. Yeah, you're not that old. Yeah, I mean, I'm old, but I ain't that old. Yeah. All right, here we go, gets the caddy armor plate. It's already been shot the pieces in back. And I'm going top center. All right. Nice. Let's see what we got. Clip. Ball put a whip on it. Okay, yeah, the NATO ball, which does have that bimetal jacket, it's probably the biggest dent yet out of the M1A. I knew it would stop it, but biggest dent yet. Breaking the uh, seal on the back, a little, breaking the rubber on the back a little bit. Threw it into our box. Our box is being supported by Cabela sales flyers. Two boxes of those to make it heavy. All right, so looks like we've torn most of the spalling off the plate. So should we start shooting the backside or leave it like it is? I think we just keep shooting it like it is. Keep shooting it like it is, all right. You know, the reality is that spalling is there to stop that spall or the little, you know, the little secondary missiles from coming up into your throat or other bloody areas. Right. So we don't need that, we're back there. We'll be fine with this. Yep. All right, Jason's here with his Tika 30 odd 6 T3, 165 grain GMX Hornady Superformance. Here we go. Let me put my APRO on, Jason. Here we go. Yep. Good. Ooh, that one made a nice hit. And, and it you sounded good. It slowed just enough on the fall that you could see the impact. I could see that nice little copper flower on it. Nice. Yeah, okay, that big copper right there. Yep, and that's probably uh, 32nd to a 16th of an inch of... Uh, yeah. And then, oh yeah, look, you can even see where the snow, <laughs> from the heat, yeah, the snow just, actually froze to it. Yeah, it's just a bump, though. Not didn't break the backside, just a bump. Yep. So. Good so far. Good so far. I'd, I'd wear this armor so far. What about you, Michael? I'd wear it. What about you, Jason? 
Seems good to me. Yeah, you're getting the plate if it survives. So, I already told you that. So, that's what happens when you're a Patreon member. You come shooting with me. I'm just here to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. Remington 700. Nice VX5 HD Leupold scope. I need to do a scope review on this thing. Anyway, 7 millimeter Magnum, 139 grain, Barnes LRX. This particular box was going 3,400 when I last chronographed it. So that's pretty fast. Uh, it's only rated at 3,200 on the box. So here we go. Let's go on top left, if I can. I don't think it made it through. I think it stopped it. I think it stopped it. I didn't see a hole in the box behind it. So otherwise, there'd be a hole in the box. Let's see. Let's go check it out. Oh wow, that's the deepest one yet. Seven millimeter rim mag. That 139 grain bullet going fast. Look at the backside on that. Yep. That's the biggest one, but it stopped it. You'd probably have your rib bone pushed into your lungs, but you would you wouldn't have a bullet in your lungs. So that's not a pleasant thought, but you know, <laughs> it's still it stopped it. I'm surprised that stopped it. I bet you hit it close to the same spot with the same round, it'd go through. What do you think? I don't know, man. If you if you doubled it up in the exact same impact, it might. But if you were more than a half inch off with that, I don't think it would. I don't think so either. Well, Michael Kaler, you're going to try the 338 Wind Mag. Yeah. Michael Kaler, 180 grain GMX Hornady in a 338 Wind Mag. It's going over 3,000 feet per second. 180 grain. Pick a spot, Michael Kaler. Let's go. I'm going to go upper right. All right. I'm not sure. I can see the hit. It's. Uh, I think it sank into the box. I'm going with the didn't penetrate. All right, you're going with the didn't penetrate, sank into the box. I, I think. Uh, what do you want to bet? What do you want to bet? I'll bet you a box of this that it didn't go through. You're getting a 338 anyway, right? <laughs> That's a bet. All right. You know what? I'm gonna take this down. Right, sir. That hurt, but that didn't go through. It didn't go through. It dented it. Did not dent it as much as the seven mag. So there we are. That is the biggest bulge on the back, though. Yeah, that it's is. It's even bigger than the seven mag bulge, or almost. It, it broke the spalling on the back pretty good. So, all right. Our box is getting torn up here. Let's go. Uh, 375 Ruger. Jason's going to shoot the 375 Ruger. Jason shooting his 375 Ruger Howa 20 inch barrel. I don't think it's going to go through. I don't think it's going to go through 2600 feet per second, but it is a 250 grain bullet. Usually it's speed that defeats armor. We don't have a 50 BMG or a 338 Lapua out here today. So fastest bullet we had was at 7 mag and it did the worst, worst damage. So here we go. Go ahead, Jason. Send her off. Well, daggum. Let's go check it out. Is this one? This was the one I saw new and fresh. It's big too. There you go. It's got a dent. So there it is, right there. Hit a little low. Big old bulge on the backside. Now we have torn this plate and smashed it and done all sorts of things. What about mag dumping the other 19 rounds of 62 grain ball into it? And then Michael Kaler on his channel, go check it out. He's going to do um, 460 rolling into it just for fun. So go check it out. So here we go. Let's uh, mag dump the rest of it. Who wants to mag dump first? Yeah, you go ahead and mag dump that. I got the 460 I need to test. All right, cool. Okay, well, he'll do the mag dump. Mag dump with my M1A. <laughs> 
You want to mag dump the M1A? Sure, I got a 20 round mag for it. Sure, let's do it. Getting ready for this mag dump. Jason, how do you feel about this? Oh, I'm excited. You're excited? I made it didn't do too bad. No, it didn't actually. If you hit one of those other spots, you might be able to poke through it. I turned it on. He looks all sad and dejected now. I did his job for him. He's been Johnny on the spot with that. He forgets one time I'd do it, and now he's sad. Look at that! Look at that sweatshirt. Oh, th this this sweatshirt? The misprint, yeah. The one, <laughs> the one that says something about all gun all laws are infringements. gun laws are infringements. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Good oh, T-shirt. Where or good what? sweatshirt? Where'd you get that from? Oh. I got it from my butt. Oh, look, yours are all the same color. Mine are all the same color. They finally got the third printing right. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Custom Ink. Hey, you know what? I even, because I I like the sweatshirt. It's a good color sweatshirt. The printing's good. Colors were messed up. But just so you know, I took your little liquid ink octopus, and I put it on my gun safe. Cool. Hey, just so you guys know how much we're sacrificing from you out here, look at all the snow that's getting on all the guns, okay? We're going to have to clean all of these rifles out here just so we can bring you this entertainment. All right, Jason, let's go for it. <laughs> America! All right, look at this. Guys, it, it stopped every one of those 308 rounds. It's all deformed. There are a bunch of uh, dinks in it, a bunch of dents in it, but it surely, surely stopped them. Look at the backside. There's some more breakages, but nothing came through. Nothing came through. Like I said, I paid for this armor. Caddy Armor did not send it. Hopefully, they'll send me another one to test, but they did. it did not go through. I'm impressed. M80 ball. We did get close here. Looks like that that hit on three... top of the seven mag is what it was. That's where the seven mag yeah. was. There's three rounds, and one of them's a seven mag, really close. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's dump a 62 grain ball into it out of a 20 inch. Wait, the 62 grain uh, M855. 62 grain M855 with the steel core. Uh, yeah, with the tungsten steel core in it. Let's uh, see. Uh, it might. It might if you dump them all close to the same spot. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go, Michael Kaler, mag dumping 20 inch AR. And we've got the plate. Hopefully it'll stay up long enough to get multiple rounds on it. Try to get multiple rounds in the same target place if you can. Yep. Light primer strike again. Uh, it might be that match trigger that's in there. That happens sometimes when you have really light triggers. You get, you get a light you get a light primer strike on a on a hard military primer like that. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna send this one through the 16 inch real quick. This was my point of aim, mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, barrel sight relationship, because at that distance, you realize that's still that about three inches. Yeah. So these are all my rounds right in here. Yeah, some of them hit the table occasionally. There's one that missed or something. 
Well, no, because it was actually sitting. Yeah, it was sitting down in the table, caught like it, that. which so, was nice for us. Yeah. So you look at all these, and I mean, you got just ever so slight. I, I wouldn't even call them deformation. I mean, they're burrs. Yeah. They're, burrs. I mean, you could sand those out easily. Yeah. And then yeah. this one here that did hit a table or something. That that's my shot. It was it was lined up like way like this, so it hit like kind of sideways on that. Yep. But uh, geez, that's crazy. Just burrs. No no dents. This thing can take it. Caddy armor can take it. And for the deal, ninety nine bucks, free shipping to Alaska. Jeez. I mean, it's just like you can't beat it. You guys are gonna have one next paycheck if you're not if you're. <laughs> If you're helpful, you know. If, that honestly is one of those things nowadays that that might be worthwhile to have something like that just in your daily carry backpack, especially absolutely. if you know it'll do this much. Absolutely. If you need to, you can, you know, put it on your back to move away. If you're in the position to be moving towards it, you know, if you're Peshmerga, you put it on the front and move towards fire, you know, because who cares if you look a little funny with your backpack on your front if you're doing work. Right. Agreed. Caddy armor. Caddy armor. Caddy armor, guys, stopped everything we threw at it. We can't penetrate it, right? Maybe one more seven mag. What's the seven, seven mag, mag dump? Anybody for it? I'm for it, seven mag, mag dump. Let's see if we can destroy this thing. Here we are, seven millimeter Remington Magnum, Barnes 139 grain, mag dump. We got five rounds where you're gonna mag dump it into that armor. See, right in the middle. I'm going right for everything that's already hit. See if we can poke a hole through it. This is our best performer yet on it. Ah, that was already five rounds. <laughs> I was having fun. Cut. One, two, three, four, five. At that angle, it just they just bounced right up. That was our uh, when it was flat. That was our best performer. But at that angle, they they performed way worse. Not even. You can you can feel each where where the nose impacted. You know the most energy in the smallest point. You can feel a little bit there, but it's not nothing that worries me about using that armor. Yeah. So if you guys want me to shoot it with a 50 BMG, Patreon link is below. I need 10 grand for a Barrett. But other than that, you know, this is what we got available to us. Most powerful stuff. No, a 4570 wouldn't go through it. Chook proved it on his channel. Guys, thank you for watching. Caddy Armor, Mag Dump, 7 Mag, you know, M855 Ball, M80 Ball, Mag Dumps. This thing has taken everything. And it's deformed. It ain't shaped the same anymore. But gum. It would hurt you. You'd be hurt. But gum, if it didn't actually, if it didn't actually stop everything, you wouldn't have lead in you. That's for sure. You would not have any lead, steel, copper, anything in you. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.